Hello, this is the online orientation for BHM 616 Farm Care 3. The first thing we're going to do is go through some of the general course information and then we will click on some of the links and I will tell you everything that you'll need to know in order to be successful in the course. At the end of this, you will have the opportunity to complete a quiz to test your knowledge, and we will go through that at the end. First, we start with general course information. Um, you can click on this link in the left-hand side and see the syllabus, the weekly schedule, and the class groups all listed there. We'll start by going through the syllabus. So this is the Omni syllabus. It's similar to the syllabus that you've seen for other farm care um, sequences. So a lot of this will be review. Um, some of the things that I did want to highlight though are listed near the bottom. And those are the specifics for PHM 616 Farm Care 3. So Farm Care 3 is going to focus a little bit more on hospital. It's going to focus on inpatient care. And some of the activities that we have planned are going to be following for transitions of care patients, how to perform medication reconciliation in the hospital, how to discharge counsel, and what we do in terms of follow-up. So the course description is basically that we're going to be doing a variety of activities related to inpatient care. So the course outcomes are similar to what they are for other farm cares, but more specific for inpatient care. I'm Nicole Siri Hutcherson. I'm going to be your course coordinator. There is going to be a time when I go on maternity leave, probably mid-February. At that time, the temporary course coordinator is going to be Dr. Bob Waller. And then the student contact for any questions or issues is going to be Kelly Sostakowski. She's the academic coordinator. Those are the course instructors listed there. We have a number of teaching assistants that will be assisting us. Some of the things that I wanted to highlight is that as the course coordinator, while I'm not on maternity leave, so I will let you know once I do go out, you should contact me for any issues related to having to miss class, if you have any conflicts, um, if you have any questions about the content of each of the classes, you should contact me. After my leave, you should contact Kelly and then she will triage your questions to the appropriate person. Once I return, I will be the course coordinator again and I will be the person that you will be contacting. The course instructors are listed there, so when we look at the schedule, you'll, that'll make a little bit more sense. In terms of the practicum and laboratory conflicts, this is probably the most important thing in terms of either when I'm out or even before I go out. If you have a conflict or if you are going to be missing class for any reason, please contact me as soon as possible, as soon as you know about the conflict. After my, I go out for maternity leave, then you should be contacting Kelly, and then she will triage to the appropriate person. The only excuses that are going to be honored are those that are considered um, appropriate excused absences. Um, so you'll have to have documentation, for example, if you were sick, or out of town for a death in the family, you'll have to have documentation of whatever the reason is that you are unable to attend class. You have to attend class in order to receive credit and we'll only honor the excused absences. So if you're late or you miss a session due to an unexcused absence, then you may receive a grade of zero or a reduced grade. Um, if it is an excused absence, then it will need to be made up. This is the grading weight of all the different activities. So for example, after watching the online orientation, you can complete the orientation quiz. This will be worth 2% of your overall grade. 
each of the different activities have their weight listed here. So most of them are 14%. They're just distributed equally other than the first one, which is the online quiz. So we can go through some of the activities. I have listed some of the outcomes that we track to make sure that we're covering everything we need to cover. Um, so I've listed some of the key mapping that we are going to cover in each of the different activities. And then also which part of the pharmacist patient care process we are going to be covering as well. So we're going to be doing communication, collaboration, and documentation within the pharmacist patient care process. And then further, we're going to also be doing collect, assess, plan, implement, and follow up in a number of the different activities. So those are just there for your reference. You can see the grade breakdown. The other thing to note if you go up further in the Omni syllabus is that based on your activity grades, we will be assigning a corresponding final course grade. Please note that for farm care sequence, the scores for A and A minus are a bit higher in order to achieve those corresponding grades than they are in other classes. So it's important to check UBLearns in order to see any updates. It's also important to continuously check your UB email. I would recommend checking it at least once a day for any updates or information. This will be important, especially once I go out on leave, so you know who to contact if you have any conflicts. Okay, so that's the syllabus. The second thing that we're going to go through is the schedule. So what I've done is I put myself for the first couple sessions until I go out on maternity leave, but after that time there will be a faculty facilitator for each of the sessions other than myself. So whatever the session is, if you have any questions or conflicts or issues with the session, please contact me as well as the facilitator for that session. So for example, if you have a question about the Transitions of Care Activity 2, you can contact myself and Dr. Waller. If you have questions about Transitions of Care Activity 3, or if you have a conflict or something comes up in excused absence, then you would contact myself, Kelly, if it's during maternity leave, and Dr. Slazak. The sessions will be split up into most of the time two weeks for each session. So based on the number of groups and the number of students, in order to facilitate them going through the sessions, we have split the times. So each group only has to report once within a two-week period, and then those group schedules are listed here. So for example, if you are in group five and it's the Transitions of Care Activity 2, then you would report at 8 a.m. on week 6, March 6, 2018. So you report at 8 a.m. and then you'll be done by 10 a.m. The next groups will come in at that time. The following week you won't be required to attend. So please take a moment to jot down what time and what days you will be required to be in class. It's important to note the time and the days. As the times are not consistent, we tried to change them around so not every group is either going the first week and not every group is going at 8 a.m. So sometimes you'll be going at 8, sometimes at 10 a.m., and then <clears throat> sometimes the first week and sometimes the second week. So that has been changed to make it fair. So please review this. If there's any updates to it, I will contact you via UBLearns and your UB email as soon as possible. The third thing is the class groups. So the class groups are the same as your therapeutics groups. So take a moment to make sure that you're in a group 
and that your name is listed here somewhere. If it's not, please contact me as soon as possible. Um, there may be changes before the final class list is finalized. So if your name's not listed in a group, contact myself or Kelly Sosikowski. Um, so, and please check the groups periodically if there's any changes before the add or drop date. I'll try to make sure that I notify you via UB Learns and UB email if there's any significant changes to the groups so that you know what times and what days for the weeks that you're reporting. Okay, so that's the general course information. Um, we went through the Omni syllabus, the schedule, what times to report, what groups everyone's in. Make sure that you're checking your email and UB Learns regularly. We talked about absences and what would constitute an excused or unexcused absence. Um, grading, course instructors, the percentages for each of the activities. Let's move on to, there's course coordinator contact information. So my information is here as well as in the syllabus. So it's in a couple places. Weekly course documents will have information for each of the weeks. So for example, online orientation, you will find the link to the quiz listed under week one. If there's any information or videos to watch for each of the different weeks, I will post them under the corresponding weeks. Some of the other notes, I'll just go back to the schedule quickly because you can see them in the weekly course documents. There are a couple times when you don't have to report at all. So for example, week one is the online orientation. You won't have to report at all that week, no matter what group you're in. Week eight, there's no class due to spring recess. And then on April 17th, we have no class due to Albany Day, as I expect a number of students to miss that day. If the date of Albany Day gets changed, we might have to move the schedule around slightly, so I will be in contact with you if that is the case. So again, weekly course information will be under the corresponding weeks. I've listed the weeks that we don't have class again under this section as well. I will close with please contact me if you have any questions about anything um, even before class starts. Other important things to review would be professional dress is required for any of the activities so rem please remember that professional dress includes professional clothing, your white coat, as well as your name tag. So make sure you have your white coat, your UB issued name tag, make sure you're wearing professional dress on any of the days when we are having activities that you might be counseling. So I will list when professional dress is required, but please assume that for most activities, professional dress is required and all three are required to get credit. There will be times when I will require you to use your um, electronic resources. So I'll let you know ahead of time when you might need those. For example, you will need them for the first sessions for counseling. So you can please mark on your calendars that you will need to bring your laptops or electronic resources for looking up medications for weeks two and three, so February 6th and February 13th. If there are any other times when you're going to be required to use electronic resources, I'll make sure to let you know. I believe that's it. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me either before the course starts um, or after the course starts anytime. Um, once I go on leave, again, here's the student contacts and the temporary course coordinator during my leave. You can feel free to email me even during my leave, and I will forward your email on to the appropriate people as well. 
my email is here. That's the best way to contact me. And I've listed my office hours by appointment at this time, as I don't know when I'll be going out, so I didn't want to choose a day and time. Okay, thank you again.